It's never about the narcissist and it's always about you. It's always about what you're willing to do and how far you're willing to go. So let's say you're having a conversation, you're a codependent and you've been attracted to narcissistic people your whole life. A, not your fault. So let's say you're at a party with, let's say, a narcissistic sister and you are the scapegoat of the family dynamic and mom and dad throughout, you know, raising this one particular child never set boundaries with, with her because she was the one that always pitched a fit. And you were the one, maybe the middle child or the older child, um, but let's say you were the sibling who observed your sister and how she acted and you were more more aware, more empathetic, and you could see the bigger picture of the family dynamic, and you saw that mom was getting frustrated. So as a natural natural empath or a natural, just a person who's very sensitive, you didn't want to add to the dynamic, so you shut yourself down. And a couple of things happened in that situation. As a child, you got to avoid your sister's wrath. Not a bad strategy. But what happens is that way of relating to the world becomes ingrained. It becomes a pattern. And then we marry narcissistic spouses. And then we attract narcissistic friends. And then we are the person in the office who never speaks up. And we are the friend that never speaks up. And we are the sibling that never speaks up. We are the sibling who's trying so hard to get validated by the family, but we keep getting steamrolled. We keep getting knocked over. What's really awesome is once you see that, that's when you have the power to change it. So when dealing with, let's say, in the now, with a narcissistic sister, for instance, we also have to understand this narcissistic setup or the ingredients of the family dynamic that actually created this type of situation that you have, you know, between you and your sister and you and your family, blah, 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 blah. You have to understand there's a dynamic at play. So if you know that, you know, because your sister pitched a fit or your brother pitched a fit or your brother was a drug addict and that's why the family was so preoccupied with him and they, you got lost somewhere in the middle. If you know this is the dynamic, then what you want to do is stop contributing to that dynamic. So you may want to start saying no to family functions. Or you may want to start, you know, limiting your time at family functions. You might want to start playing with the word no when it comes to other people. So if you have a brother or a sibling who is a drug addict and is causing a lot of chaos in the family and is just not at a point where he can take care of himself, you know, and mom calls you all upset and says, you know, your brother, your brother, your brother's out of money again. And you know, I don't have any cash on me and he's got to pay his rent. And I'm sending him to your house right now. You know, I want you to get, you know, get some money together, go to the bank, get $1,100 for him and I'll pay you later. You can start saying no. No, it's very, very difficult, but you can start saying no. What will happen then is you're upset, you're, ro you're rocking the apple cart, right? So what's going to happen is externally, your life is going to get bumpy, but what will happen miraculously is internally, you're going to start to feel peaceful. Amazing. I promise you that's what happens, but a good support system at that time will definitely benefit you. So that's addressing the family dynamic that created this craziness that you're living with. When it comes to narcissistic people, dealing with them one-on-one, -on -one, there are a couple of things that you can do. First of all, you have to be aware. And some people don't, they have, they have trouble like labeling someone a narcissist, you know, just in general. But, you know, I think that when you move into the spirit of discernment, you know, and it's not judgmental, it's just, I'm not, I don't want to judge you. But what I do want to do is be able to identify from a very logical place how you communicate and how you interface with the world and others. Because if I can discern how you interface with other people, then I can figure out whether or not you're a taker or a giver. So as you evolve, it'll be much easier for you to play with discernment versus judgment, which is a great tool. Um, you know, codependents generally, they've had their words twisted and we have been so messed with that the minute we try to speak up with for ourselves, you know, a narcissist will say, oh, you're labeling me or, oh, you're judging me. And all you're trying to do is really explain your position. But most of them are so clever with the way they twist our words that, you know, the minute you say to a narcissist, you know, um, let's say a narcissist says, well, you should have cared about how I felt. And then you defend yourself and say, well, I didn't see you care about how I felt. You know, they'll turn it or turn it into, well, you judged me. Completely bypassing this, this concept that they started with you first. They don't see it. Narcissists don't see it. 
Narcissists do not acknowledge the first action that pushed the snowball down the hill. They don't do it. They, they don't do it. So as a codependent who's healing, it helps us to be able to identify how people play in the sandbox. You know, if you watched a bunch, a bunch of little kids, you could, in, you know, in about 20 to 30 minutes, if you watch like 15 children, you could pretty much figure out who the kid is in the crowd that thinks, A, everybody should take care of him. B, who thinks she has a right to everybody else's toys. C, who's afraid to speak up. You could figure it out. Now, you're not judging these children, you're discerning. So as adults, it helps us to discern. So start using your spirit of discernment to be able to do that. When it comes to setting boundaries with narcissistic people, you have to understand their agenda is to not hear you. So before you even have a conversation with a narcissistic person, you have to be very clear about what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a rock. You're dealing with a rock. No matter how you try to have a conversation with the narcissist, how willing you are to like be able to permeate them and to work with them, it's not gonna happen. You're gonna get a rock. They're not gonna see your point of view. The minute you try to like hold them accountable, they're gonna shut down, they're gonna turn on you, they're gonna talk bad about you, they're going to start clubs that talk bad about you. <laughs> they're gonna join clubs that talk bad about, forget it, they're gonna to try to pull people into their, the way they, they see you, and that's okay. So setting a boundary with, with a narcissistic person begins with your spirit of discernment, you figuring out what you're dealing with. And then secondly, it's a really, really good idea for you to understand that if you engage with a narcissist, what will happen is, and you're not really on top of your game mentally, they'll pull you into your root chakra wound. So if you were abandoned as a child, and that's why you, you are codependent, and your root chakra gets activated by how the narcissist treats you, maybe they're abandoning you, maybe they're silent treatment, maybe they're, you know, they're gaslighting you, your root chakra will get activated. You set boundaries best with the narcissist when you learn how to understand that you have the right to break free of that trauma and move up the chakra system and learn how to say, no, I don't need to engage with you. So setting boundaries with, with the narcissist involves very high level of self-awareness, discernment, the power to say no in spite of the fact that drama is going to ensue out, outside of you, and also understanding that um, when you so, when you go in knowing what your agenda is with the narcissist, it is not to get pulled into the drama, then you are in a great position to not attach yourself to an outcome. So never attach yourself to an outcome with a narcissist. Always know that you cannot rely on a narcissist to agree with you. So setting a boundary with a narcissist must be about where you're coming from, what you can control, what your desired outcome in and is, is, and primarily it has to be rooted in being able to stabilize yourself to a point where you at least do not go down the rabbit hole. So we set boundaries with narcissistic people by holding on to ourselves, using the spirit of discernment, practicing with the word no, seeing the big picture, knowing that this is definitely a journey and this is a process and that there are certainly what, especially if you're in a family, there's a dynamic at play. And in the now, you want to start slowing down the momentum of that specific dynamic. And specifically, when you're trying to set boundaries with, with narcissists, you must know that your agenda must be primary, that you cannot negotiate, set boundaries with the narcissist. No, it's never about the narcissist and it's always about you. It's always about what you're willing to do and how far you're willing to go because a narcissist is not going to change. The narcissist, once a narcissist feels like you're pulling the power away from their ability to control you, then they're going to dig their heels into, in even deeper. So you have to decide how far you're willing to go with a narcissist in any given dynamic 